Hi, welcome to valuationpodcast.com, a podcast and video series about all things related to business and valuation. My name is Melissa Gregg, and I provide valuation and mediation services based in St. Louis, Missouri. Today, we're actually kind of building upon a prior discussion that we had, but we're going to be discussing the pandemic economy and divorce with Josh Schiltz and Patrick Kilbane. Josh's practice is really focused on complex financial matters and disputes. He's a frequent lecturer on forensic accounting topics and has been involved with hundreds of forensic investigations dealing with matters involving personal and business disputes, as well as the identification and mitigation of fraudulent activities. He's also provided expert testimony in commercial and family matters surrounding business valuations, economic damages, fraud, and other Um, disciplines having to do with accounting and economics. He's a forensic valuation expert and offers tax advice in the state of Florida. Pat, on the other hand, is a wealth advisor with nearly a decade of experience in helping clients coordinate their wealth management plans. He's also general counsel for Allman Wealth Partners. He is the director of Divorce Advisory Group, where he assists, guides, and supports clients before, during, and after they begin the divorce process. He helps high net worth clients make financial decisions at all stages of the divorce process by using his family law experience, uh, his wealth management experience, and his certified divorce financial analyst designation. I think that what kind of everybody out there is trying to figure out and talking about is how have we seen divorce shift during the pandemic and it you know is it all encompassing question but just some of the things that you've seen maybe josh will start out with you you know what have you seen with divorce and valuation and how has it been changing valuation um i think the best way to understand that is to look back and understand that when we do value something there's an expectation of cash flow. And the last 18 months has impacted businesses in a traditional life cycle of five to seven years, depending on whichever author of a book. So we've had this 18 month period where there was a lot of guesses as what was going to happen, crashes. And we've come out of that. And now here, as we sit in 2021, we have some historical data that we're analyzing, not just that's coming from service providers, but are in our, in our own practices. And I'm lucky enough to speak with other practitioners, not just here in Florida, but throughout the country. And, you know, we're seeing some common things. And some of the common things that we're seeing is a lot of small and medium sized entities um, went through their PPP funds, even with sustained revenues, right? Um, Some of them did it smart by investing into um, what I would say are operating assets that will do ROI. I think some of of them didn't manage it as well. So what does that mean? We have unique balance sheet situations. So while we've always said we need to focus on the balance sheet first and understand what assets a business has and how those assets throw off return or operate, We now have potentially excess cash at issue, um, incomes. Uh, So one of the things that has come up in my valuation work was there were a lot, there's a lot of times I get a call, we need a valuation and then an income analysis comes. I say that that's almost definite now when the valuation call is coming from an attorney or I'm having a discussion with the client and the attorney, I I ask, have you, um, do you have any issues with income? Um, now they're saying yes. So now not only in it, and I think it's important for the valuation professional to do this because we're accounting for the PPP funds or we're accounting for disruptions in a short period. Right. But remember valuation is an expectation. Um, it's an expectation of what the market will pay for an EBITDA multiple or an expectation of the cash flow generated for an asset. Right. My point is, we're seeing how that cash is used and then how that will drop down to the individual or multi-partner owners. So there's been some income analyses where we're looking at, are you living off of retained earnings or AR? Was this true operating cash or was this 
uh, a financing activity that was a part of a federal stimulus program. Mm -hmm. um, and working more with advisors like Pat, and it's really a good segue because <laughs> another thing that's coming out of the pandemic, I think, um, is a positive sign is I when we're working with divorces, specifically high net worth divorces, the, the handoff of my information it, it, to someone like a financial advisor, I'm seeing that more frequently because of concerns from clients about uncertainty. <laughs> that would be my two cents. Pat, I, I don't know if you're seeing something different. Yeah, well, thanks, Josh. So divorce during the pandemic, I really don't think it's very much different than divorce at any other time. I mean, there are always going to be economic events that are going to cause uncertainty. Think 2007 through 2010, right? I mean, let's say you're a very successful land developer and you're getting a divorce in 2007. Well, the valuation of that business is markedly different in 2008 than it is in 2007, right? So, and again, state laws on state dissolution of marriage laws are different in every jurisdiction. A lot of them are very similar, but what you have to remember is the court has to value the court has to put a value on an asset when that court is when that asset is presented to the court okay so i do have a lot of discussions with people that are business owners that are getting it that are contemplating divorce right now and they'll say hey is now a good time for me to do it and then on the other side of that coin the non-business owner spouse is saying well geez for all the reasons that josh just outlined maybe I can tough this out for another 18 months and see if things improve. So I, I think whether it's the pandemic, whether it's the financial crisis, whether it's Brexit, uh, whether it's the savings and loan crisis back in 87, whether it's the dot com bust, there is always going to be there's always going to be uncertainty. And, you know, you all are dealing specifically with valuation. But, you know, the super majority of divorce cases, there is not a business involved. Yeah. Uh, so for those cases and for the people that are on the podcast that are, are, you know, more looking for a macro answer, a lot of it is business as usual.